Hello everyone! Last week I announced that I was planning to do a couple of videos where I would read you the novels. I would still love to do this, but unfortunately I can't, because of several issues amongst them are copyright problems. This is probably why they offer audiobooks for real money instead of offering it for free on YouTube, but it means that placing this kind of video, reading these novels for you guys, would put my channel at risk and I don't want to do that. So unfortunately, this idea, I can't do it. It's a bit of a shame, since I still want to do something with lore, just something that's also possible in my schedule. So what I want to suggest is trying to see if we can make this Q&A thing more of a regular thing. I get questions and comments all the time that I answer individually, so why not make a video about them and share it with all of you? Now these questions, they can be about lore, they can be about the game, they can be about different games, my opinion on something, personal questions. Go nuts, you can ask me anything, but I'll decide what questions to answer. To make it easier for all of us, please ask your questions on ask.fm forward slash novel. You don't need to make an account, and you can even send in your questions anonymously. So I hope this sounds like fun, and I hope this is going to be a brilliant idea that's going to get a lot of videos and a lot of lore out. I sure hope so. Let's make it happen. Well, that's the end of my message, really. Now, to fill up the rest of the video, let me respond to some of the comments might be interesting to uh, yeah get some answers out there maybe get some inspiration going the first one i want to reply to is one that i've received on my dark below speculation video there are some that take the video made by blizzard about the burdens of xiaohao as an argument for the return of the burning legion i love the videos i thought they were brilliant and if they're a hint of what's to come for the new warcraft movie I'm definitely going to see it in the theaters. If you haven't seen the videos yet, if you haven't seen the series about them yet, I'll link them in the description and I can highly recommend for you to go check them out. But having that said, they're not completely accurate as to the lore story that's going on. The original story contains Xiao Hao and the Monkey King. The Monkey King gave him a couple of masks and each time that he placed a mask on his face, a Xiao would come out and they would do battle for a while. He repeated this process until he defeated his burdens. Now this would be awfully boring to watch, so they spiced it up a little bit, and in doing so, they changed the reason and the way Xiao Hao covered that land in mist. In the movie he does this consciously, and with a definite purpose. His people aren't ready yet, and they need time to learn what he has learned. In truth, the mists were a side effect of his pride, as we already learned in the game. But I held on to one vice, the one Sha I never conquered. Pride. My pride cloaked this land in mists. I thought we were better than the rest of the world. I thought we could solve our own problems, but for 10,000 years we stagnated, our doubts and fears buried in the land, rising up to fester whenever we allowed them. Now this is not just my opinion, they actually confirmed this on Twitter. So just to make it clear, the mists were not placed to give the people his time to learn, they were placed by his pride. The mist parted, not because they're ready to take on the Burning Legion, we still don't know exactly why they parted. It could be because of Deathwing and his Cataclysm, it could be because of Xiao Hao, it could be the Sha itself taunting us to feed him with our emotions. We just don't know and I'm hoping that they will give us an answer in the future. In what order would you recommend to read the books to get into the story of World of Warcraft? If you want to do it in a chronological order, just google for WoW novels chronological and it should give you a list. I believe that starts with the Well of Eternity trilogy, which I'm currently reading for the very first time and it's a damn good series. It definitely is worth your money. My recommendation however would be to read the novels about how the war between the Horde and Alliance started. That means Rise of the Horde, The Last Guardian, Tides of Darkness, Beyond the Dark Portal, and to finish it off, Lord of the Clans. The last one tells about how Thrall became the Warchief and how he created the new Horde and what his mindset was when he created this new Horde, which is definitely important if you want to take the story to the current WoW. Now if you're really interested in the lore but you can't afford buying the novels, then I would just recommend either WoW Wiki or WoWpedia. Just search for something, like Medivh for example, and just keep browsing, just click on those names. Just the simple story of Medivh can link you to Agewin, to Medan, to Garona, to Ketkar, all kinds of different stories. Also, Scrolls of Lore is a fantastic lore website. It not only contains official lore, but it also has speculation created by the fans, which are sometimes mind-blowingly good to read. Who did your spiffy new background for your novel, and how do you say your name? Does it mean anything? 
My new banner on the YouTube page was created by Peculia, also known as Crazy Night Fever on the YouTube. And Peculia, I just want to say again, thank you so much for taking your time in making this banner. I think it is freaking amazing. Just look at my character with a little link in front of it and a little general gaming things and the lore question mark. I freaking love it. My name? Well, you could pronounce it any way you like, to be honest. I say it's like Noble. But if you want to say Nubel or Noble or Noble, go for it. I, I honestly don't care. And the meaning behind it is very little. I could tell the story behind it, but it would be lost in translation. It has something to do with bubbles and stuff like that, and it wouldn't be fun. I did take my name before I had any clue what a noob was. And now I kind of like the association with it, to be honest, since I love being a noob. Those first moments in a game where everything is new and exciting, those are the best of times, man. So now whenever somebody accidentally types my name wrong and they say nooble, I see that as a compliment, to be honest. <laughs> I love it, but that might just be me. Can we see your face, please? Yes, you can. I have pictures on my Facebook and a link to my Facebook can be found in the description. Will I ever add a face cam to my videos? Well, never say never. But for now, I don't see the value in having my face in every video. I mean, it would be the logical evolution of my YouTube channel, of course. I mean, now I'm doing a Q&A. Next step should be scare cams. But I honestly don't see the value of my face in a video. Maybe in the future. Who knows? Are you interested in covering or playing Hearthstone? Let me just tell you, I'm very, very, very interested. But unfortunately, they haven't released the beta in Europe yet. I've had to restrain myself from watching the beta coverage from other people because I want to go into the game with a fresh mind and as a noob. I did apply for the beta, so maybe, hopefully, I'll get accepted. And if not, I'll probably make a playthrough when the game is actually released. From the little sneak peeks that I've seen, it looks like a ton of fun and I can't wait to get my hands on it, to be honest. Do you want your channel to be bigger? I kinda hope it doesn't get too big, because then you wouldn't have enough time to answer any of us. This question is very two-sided. Of course I would love to see the channel grow. More people here means more people to share the videos with, and more people who enjoy the lore and the playthroughs and all that I do. Of course, that's a fantastic thing. On the other hand, if the comments do keep growing, it might become impossible to reply to all of them. I think it would really suck, because it's one of the joys with working on YouTube, if you ask me. Uh, whenever I wake up and I see the list of comments, whenever there's a new comment posted, yeah, that's, that's a little, little joy inside. Right now, it isn't a problem for me to keep up, and I try to respond as much as possible. Whenever someone asks a question that I have an answer to, I reply to that comment. If a day comes that I can't keep up anymore, well, we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. Maybe, if that time really comes, I'll just forward all questions towards the Ask FM page and we can use videos like this to respond to the comments. That might be a solution, who knows, but we'll see it in the future. With that final question, I'm going to end this little Q&A. In the future, I hope to answer a couple of more lore questions. So like I said, if you have any questions, be it be lore, be it be general question, be it be, whatever, be it lore questions, be it general questions, be it personal questions, please send them to ask.fm forward slash novel. If your question is good enough, if I think it will be interesting, it will be featured on the next video. I hope you all enjoyed this video and once again I'm very sorry that I can't go through with the novel idea. I thought it was brilliant, but yeah, I, I won't be reading you your bedtime stories, I'm very sorry. Until next time guys, see ya! Oh, by the way, before I forget, they've announced the release date for patch 5.4 and it's going to be September 10th. So write it down in your agenda, write it down in the calendar, the patch is coming. They also recently gave an interview and they said that they're going to announce the new Warchief in patch 5.4. The previous information said that they're going to wait with this information, that they're going to wait for the patch after 5.4. But apparently we don't have to wait that long and the new Warchief will be announced in the coming patch. And I can't wait. Now, for real, until next time guys. See ya!